All right, hello and welcome back everyone. Eric Marks, FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're gonna to talk about the R2 system, high-speed sync, some of the functions and the menus here that I'm gonna change around, and basically how to get you set up for shooting high-speed sync. Um, after we cover that, I've just found a couple of little bits and bobs around the office here. Uh, a watch that was given to me by a jeweler friend of the family. Of course, the one ring prop from Lord of the Rings and a mostly used bottle of my cologne. Um, I'm gonna just basically have a little mini creative product photography session in here. I, I did one video like that um, months ago, which I'll put in the description. Uh, it'll be the first link in the description. It was a, like a creative off-camera lighting video. And a lot of you seem to like it and have been begging for more ever since. So, um, cause I guess it, it, it's kind of cool because if you're on a rainy day or you don't really have the opportunity to leave your house much, you can still find pretty much anything, just something around your house, you know, in, really anything uh, to make a cool photo with, especially if you have some, some cool dynamic lighting to go along with it. So um, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the R2 transceiver here, the unit that actually sits on top of your camera. This is a Nikon D810. Uh, but they make the R2 system for Canon and Sony as well, and this should be the exact same menu system as uh, those cameras as well, because it's just the hot shoe difference. The actual menu should be the same. Uh, but I am going to show you a couple of menu, uh, just one little menu item that I changed on my Nikon camera. That obviously will be specific to Nikon, but everything else will be general to the Flashpoint system. Uh, okay, so before we hop into everything else, um, I'm going to just get the uh, camera on a close-up here of the transceiver, and I'll show you what I change in the menu system here on the hot shoe unit. Okay, so these flash triggers take a little bit of setting up, just a couple of uh, menu items that I like to change before I get to shooting. Now, these are just suggestions. Of course, you can do whatever you want with them. Um, so what you're looking at is the Flashpoint R2 transceiver unit here, mounted to my D810. And as you can see on the homepage here, uh, right now I have two flashes set up. I have a uh, an original uh, Flashpoint flash over here and then the R2 unit back there. And so I put them into separate groups. I have group A, group B. They're both on the same channel. And what I'm basically going to do is just flip back and forth between the two to change the power here um, when I'm on location shooting, right? But right now the default interface of this trigger is that you have to like scroll through the groups and they just keep you know, going down infinitely and resetting themselves. And you have to, to basically, the group that you want to change, you have to have it be in the middle position. So for example, if I wanted to change group A, I would have to scroll down until A is in the middle position. And as you can see, that can get kind of annoying because you just have to keep scrolling through this little fiddly menu um, until that stops. So I have found a way, just kind of dug into the instructions to get rid of this and make it just a little more, you know, usable, a little more friendly. So if you hold the channel and OK button, you'll get to a function menu. But you need to keep holding. Hold. There we go. OK. So now, see what just happened? I held the channel icon button until it went to the function menu, but I kept holding it until the function menu disappeared and we went back to the home interface here. And now look, there's no scrolling. You can't scroll through the groups anymore. It's just all you have to do, super easy. You just hit the group button and it lights up one of the groups and you hit the group button again. Now I can change the power of group B and then I hit the group again and I can go back to A here and change that. And as soon as I'm done, you know, changing the power there, I just hit okay. And that way I don't have to scroll all the way through my stupid groups, you know, to, and just keep, you know, dealing with this little fiddly plastic dial, I'd rather just push a button. So I just push a button for group A, change my power, hit OK, button for group B, and then I'm back to changing power again and hit OK. And that way I can just hit my button, you know, I can just basically tap my way through the groups instead of have to scroll until my group is in the middle and then I have to hit group again and then OK. Basically I'm just eliminating having to deal with the dial until we actually want to change the power of the flash there. Okay, so the next thing is uh, that I'm gonna change, you'll notice that if you take the flash power down, you can only go to 128th power. Now that's fine in most cases, but the flash point triggers and flashes are capable of doing one 256th power, which is a very low power and can actually come in handy sometimes. Um, so the way that, but you can see it won't go to one 256th power on default. You have to unlock it in the function menu. So let's hold our channel OK button again until it gets to the function menu. This time we're gonna let go, all right? And it'll be function number five. 
you can see it says 1 over 28 power. So if you just hit the group button, that'll start flashing, and you just change it to right there, 1 over 256, and then hit OK, and that'll take you right back. And now look, now we can go to any group, and we can go to 256 power. So that just unlocked that little menu. Same for group A. We go back up to group A there. We can change this all the way down to 256. So that just unlocks that little uh, menu item there. So basically when you get your you know, transceiver out of the box, you hold channel and OK uh, all the way past the, menu, the function menu for about, I don't know, maybe five or six seconds until it goes to the function menu and then back to the home page here. And that'll eliminate the little scroll issue. And you can just tap your way through the groups. And then you'll hold this uh, icon or the channel uh, button there and go to your function menu and if it you know it'll probably start you on function one so you just gotta scroll through till you get to function five change that to 256 hit OK and that's all I do on my triggers so now let's talk about high-speed sync okay let's uh, talk about how to set your camera and the flash up for high-speed sync because it's actually nothing that you do on the actual trigger on your camera this is high-speed sync capable but there's nothing in here that allows high-speed sync it's all from the camera and the flashes so let's go ahead and take a look at that Okay, so now that you guys are all familiar with the transceiver hot shoe unit, uh, let's talk about some other options for high speed sync that we have to change in the camera and the flashes here. Okay, so for the camera, um, you basically, now this is a Nikon camera. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the menu system. We're gonna go down to the pencil and then bracketing and flash. Click on flash sync speed and your camera will probably be on 250th of a second. We want to switch that to 1 250th auto FP, okay? And that's going to make the camera able to be read as high speed sync. So it's gonna read in the menu system now that this camera is high speed sync capable for off camera flash, okay? So now that we've uh, just set our Nikon camera up for that, now let's talk about the flashes, right? We're gonna go, so we talked about the trigger camera, let's go here now. Uh, I know this is a lot of stuff, but I promise I'm trying to make it as easy as I can for you. So what I did here, um, on purpose, in case there's some of you that are mixing the Flashpoint flashes, is that I have a, an original Flashpoint, okay, the version one here, and I also have the uh, the R2 unit, okay? So I have version one over here, that's why it has the other R2 transceiver on it, and then this one is the R2 actual Flashpoint Speedlight, um, because this one has the uh, transceiver unit built in, so you don't need this extra little hot shoe unit. Um, okay, so to, to set up the uh, high-speed scene capabilities on these flash. First, we're gonna start with the one that is not the R2 unit, okay? It's got an R2 transceiver hooked onto it, but the actual speed light itself is just the version one. So what you do here is basically after you hit the uh, auto FP 256th of a second, okay, on here, you're just gonna notice a little H with a lightning bolt pop up. And if it pops up in manual mode, okay, because you, you want this in manual mode so you can change the flash power for you know what we're gonna be doing here. Um, you can have it TTL if you want to, but basically after we change the camera to 250th of a second auto FP, you're gonna see a tiny little H with a lightning bolt pop up. I believe it's just under the M here, okay? So let me um, go back in here. Oh, it just popped up. Yep, the second I opened up my menu and pressed my shutter down halfway, it popped up. So you can see there the little uh, H with the lightning bolt. Okay, so this one is good to go. That's all you have to do with this one. It's the second that the camera is set to auto FP uh, 250th, this is high speed sync ready to go. Now let's talk about the R2 unit. Okay, the R2 unit actually has a menu item that is. Um, that says sync, it will turn on high speed sync. So if you go into the R2 unit, you'll start at uh, the green screen, okay? When it's on green, it means it is in master mode, which means this is ready to be a controller. But we don't want that because this is our master, right? On our hot shoe on the camera, this is our master. These are both gonna be slaves. So first we want to, the thing we wanna do is go to the menu here, click the sync uh, button there, and you'll see the H with the lightning bolt pop up. And then go down to this little dual arrow button, Press that a couple of times and you'll get to the orange screen, which means slave. Okay, so now that this is orange and you're in slave mode, you can actually rack through the modes to ITTL, M, repeater mode, whatever mode you want to be on. I always keep it on the RPT. 
and in slave mode, high speed sync is on and good to go. Uh, by the way, when you go into slave mode, the high speed sync icon will disappear. Don't worry about that, you're still good to go. Uh, it just means that both of these are now slaves and ready to be controlled by this master hot shoe unit. So flashes are set up, trigger set up, camera set up. Let's get into it, let's start shooting. So. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I literally just grabbed these three items before the video, but let's just get creative with it. Um, now that we have high speed sync, I can go into manual mode on my camera and I'm gonna go up to, let's start with like uh, 32 hundredth of a second. So 3,200, okay, of a second. And we'll start with a good macro aperture, which is like F11. Okay, so remember, this is, a, this is a 100 millimeter macro lens, by the way. So if I'm at F11, it's still gonna be a very shallow depth of field. Um, and then I'm at 32 hundredth of a second. Remember, the sync speed to your camera is probably 200th or 250th, but now that we're in high speed sync, we can break that all the way to 1 8,000th of a second. So what is that gonna do for us? That's going to kill the ambient light in my room. You can see my office here is pretty well lit. I have a video light right here that I'm not gonna turn off for this. I have a big window right here in my office that's giving me light. And so I'm gonna crush all of that light with my shutter speed and then fill in the rest with these flashes. So let's do a, uh, a wannabe product photographer shot here, okay? Let's try to get this watch standing up here. I didn't plan this out very well, did I? Uh, let's see if I can get it to stand up. Okay, good enough. And then we'll, it's probably gonna fall because the table's shaking. So what we'll do is we'll put one of the flashes, we'll just kind of surround it in flashes. We'll lay it down and we'll, put it on either side of the front here, okay? We'll just have it come in at an angle. All right, let me scoot my chair back so I can shoot here. And camera settings, I'm on ISO 64. Again, lowest I can go to just kill that ambient light. F11, shutter speed 1 hundredth of a second. Let me change my flash powers here to be a little more powerful. And we'll bump them up to Let's have like a, a kicker light and then maybe like a, just a little less powerful of a light. So we'll have this one at one quarter power and this one's gonna be at one thirty second power, okay? So let me change that in my trigger here. So there's that. All right, and we're off. Let's take some shots. I'm gonna go to manual focus for this because it's easier to do that when you're shooting a macro lens. And as soon as I get my manual focus, I'll pop off the shot here. All right, so right away, you can tell that's high speed sync. I don't know if you can see that well at all, but there is no ambient light in there whatsoever. Um, it's all flash, and that's actually pretty cool. I like this. Um, it is nowhere near a you know, professional product photographer shot. If I was gonna do that, I would have dusted every square inch of this table and intensively cleaned the glass on the watch. So these are all gonna be messy. Please don't, don't judge the photos too harshly. This is just showing you what you can do with some flash, a table, and an office. Um, you know, just grab this, this video is meant to help you set up the flashes and also help you be creative. You know, I love, I love finding, cause sometimes you'll get that cool shot that might actually sell. You know, you could find some cool way to make a theme with some stuff in your office. Like I've, I've done a couple of shots with this Lord of the Rings ring before that turned out pretty cool. Um, cause I have a couple of old Lord of the Rings books. So I put this like on top of the pages. It turned out pretty cool. So yeah, let's, let's do a couple of the shots of the watch. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get a little closer in this time. Remember, this is a macro lens, so I can get really close to my subject. All right, this is great. So I noticed the flash is a little hot, okay, on this side here. Um, no, it's this side. The flash is a little hot on the left where we have the quarter power. So I can either tone it down here, which is what I'm probably gonna do, but aperture also controls the flash power. So it controls how harsh the flash is going to look. It doesn't control it in power as far as, it, it, my aperture is not going to change this to one quarter power or one eighth power, but it is going to affect how much light from the flash is getting into my shot. So I am gonna take my F11 to F16, okay? Which will give me even more depth of field, which I am perfectly fine with, because in actual product photography, I would be focus stacking this probably with probably six to eight different photos. There's another one. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just super cool looking. All right, so I'm done with the watch for now. Let's do something with this ring, the Lord of the Rings ring. Um, hmm, let's see, ooh. All right, I have my, uh, I just got a weird little idea. See, this is not planned, but I have my Fuji X-T2 here. All right, let's set up the X-T2. Um, and let's put 
the Lord of the Rings ring. Let me make sure this is all in the shot. I think it is. Let's put the Lord of the Rings ring on top of one of the little mechanical dials. Um, this way we're kind of artistically insinuating that this is the X-T2 is one camera to rule them all, right? I like that idea. So let's stand the flashes up for this one. I want some hard side lighting. And then we'll do some backlighting. So we'll put this one behind it, okay? And this one off to the side so we can get that X-T2 logo kind of side lit. So basically I have a flashback here, okay? Backlighting and then my kicker light here. So let's see how this looks. I have no clue how this is gonna look, but I guess we'll find out. This might be a terrible idea, but it might turn out kind of cool. I have to get lower for this one, much lower. Okay, let's see, there we go. Uh, actually, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna make some adjustments. We'll open up the aperture back to F11. And the camera's leaning down a little too much, so I wanna lean it up on something. Let's, let's get my little toboggan here <laughs> and put the uh, lens on that so that the camera's kind of straight, there we go. Then we'll put the ring back on it here. This is a super unprofessional product photography shot, isn't it? All right, but this is what this is what keeps the creative juices flowing, you know? Have fun with it, play around. I'm gonna go to live view for this so that I can get it all set up the way I want it. Because I want the Fujifilm logo in there, but I also want the X-T2 logo. And the ring, obviously. So we're gonna, let's do that, let's see what happens. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Let's um, take the shutter speed to 5,000th of a second because I want to crush, because remember now I'm pointing almost directly into my window in my office. So we're getting a little bit of backlighting there. And the only backlighting I want is from this flash, not from the window. So I want to kill all the ambient. So I just did that by taking it from 3,200th to 5,000th of a second. And take it. All right, now let's do a vertical with just the X-T2 and the one ring. That might be kind of cool, right? Let's see. See, photography is all about just playing around until you get something you like. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's just do a, um, a Fujifilm uh, straight on shot here with the logo. Why not? You know, it, it'll super simple, but why not try it? We're here, we have the camera, so let's just do it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get more simple than that, but it's powerful. Let's take up the aperture to F9 from F11, and we'll actually let a little bit more ambient light in. So I just took it from 5,000th of a second to 2,500th of a second because I want to I want to see a little bit more of the the contour of the camera, a little bit of the some of the curves in there. Okay. Do one more shot of that. And then we'll move on so I can quit boring everybody here. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Let's um so what what would happen if we put the ooh, this might be kind of cool. Let's put the one ring to rule them all on the lens here. I wonder if we could get, I wonder if we could even hang it and get that with the Fujifilm logo. Now that would be killer. I might can do it. Let's try this. Let's see. I'm going to need more depth of field for this. I'm going to take it up to F18. Or no, I'm going to take it up to F20. Probably going to have to turn up my flash. Let's turn up the flash power by one stop. Probably going to need to do it more than that, but we'll start with one stop. And I'll take that up. Okay, and let's try this out. See what happens. Why not? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Pretty neat. Let's try it again. Make it a little, hang a little lower. Uh, maybe, I don't know. You might have trouble seeing that. Me. See if I can do this in live view so I can see a little easier. Yeah, that one's cool. There we go. I had to get a little lower so I could see the writing. Yeah, so anyway, the point of this is to just mess around. Um, you know, if, if you shoot weddings or you shoot 
you know, product photography, portraits, whatever, learn how light works. You know, take, take these flashes, take five or six of them if you have them and move them around the subject and see how it affects it because light works the same if you're shooting a camera, if you're shooting a person, it's all about the, the contour of the person's face and of the product and the angles and how you're gonna work the light around that to you know, sh naturally showcase the best attributes of your subject. So, you know, be creative. Um, this is just, you know, one of those ways you can, one of those little practices you can do to just be creative is just to get, you know, find stuff in your office and uh, have at it, just start playing around. Um, let's take, before we end the video, let's, cause I was kind of curious about this. Let's take one shot of the cologne. And what I want to try to do with this one is I'm going to lay this flash down behind it since it's glass. And I'm going to sh backlight the crap out of it and just shoot through it. it. Might not look that good, but I just, have that in my head and I thought I would try it. So let's try it. Let's do live view again. Okay. We'll get the Nautica logo in there and see what happens. Now this is a mostly used bottle, so this would look way better if all the liquid was in there. Let's see how that looks. Uh, maybe let's just shoot the liquid then. We'll just get the first couple letters of Nautica because it doesn't look good without the liquid in there. Okay, let's come around to the, to the front a little more with the light. Again, this is just testing, playing around, seeing what works best. Um, let's try it this way, just a kind of a soft feathered light. I'm resting my lens on the flash, aren't I? Yep, because I am professional. All right, let's try that. Yeah, you know, nothing special, but it works to play around with. Uh, I found out that I liked the flash way better kind of feathering off the side over here instead of directly from you know this angle. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any other questions about the Flashpoint system, um, you know, shooting with flash with the Nikon, with Canon, uh, feel free to ask me anything in the comments. I can absolutely help you out because I have spent way too much time in the terrible Chinese menus that come with these things that I pretty much know everything that helps me out to work these correctly now. Uh, waiting for, so a lot of people are going to ask me, uh, yeah, this is all great, but what about flash, uh, flash options for the Fuji? Right now, one of the best flash options for the Fuji is actually not the Fujifilm flash. It's an okay flash. The best option is the Nissan stuff, the Nissan i60A, uh, some of the Nissan DI700, I think is what it's called. Um, the reason I haven't gotten the Nissan stuff yet is because high-speed sync is not supposed to be available on them until March. Right now, it's February. Um, and the reason why I haven't bought one is because it's not just a firmware download. You actually have to send the Nissan unit back to Nissan. They will directly do the firmware, the firmware download there and then send it back to you. So I don't want to have to buy one, send it back and play that game. I'm just going to wait until they uh, release their new line of flashes uh, or, you know, with them pre-installed. Much the same way when the new iPhone or new phones or computers come out, they'll come pre-installed with the new OS. So that's what I'm waiting for. Uh, until then, I'm perfectly happy using Pocket Wizard Plus 3s on my Fuji camera with these, and they all, they all work great. So, you know, High Speed Sync will come another day with this, hopefully in March, we'll see it. And if we do, uh, I'll make videos on it. But for right now, uh, my D810 works great for the High Speed Sync needs. And um, yeah, if you guys need anything, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.